Hey, what's up guys? It's Tech Sumer talking to you here. And today I want to talk about something interesting. Because as you know, WWDC was two weeks ago and we got some new computers. The amazing M2 MacBook Air was a complete redesign with amazing new features, display and of course mainly the M2 chip. With the M2 chip also we got the M2 MacBook Pro, the base model MacBook Pro. And in this video I want to talk about the fact that these two computers are out and should you buy right now the M1 Max MacBook Pro, this expensive beast or should you simply go for the newest generation of Apple Silicon, the M2, with two amazing designs, the currently new M2 MacBook Air and the proofed M2 MacBook Pro. So in this video I will answer this question and more about the time proofing of this computer. Is it still worth it to buy or should you simply go for the cheaper and newer M2 MacBook Air and M2 MacBook Pro? This is a very difficult question to answer and I think it depends on of a lot of factors. But to simplify it and to give you just a quick answer, well, I do think you still still buy it. It's still okay to buy it, but it has some quirks and some things that you need to consider. So if you want to know what these things are, do not forget to watch this video until the end. So before we go and we start this video, do not forget to drop a like down below and subscribe to my channel. That would really help me out. So let's get started. So the M1 Max MacBook Pro, a very interesting computer. It was first launched on October of 2021 and it came with two chip options, the M1 Max chip and the M1 Pro chip. This is the M1 Max 32 gigabytes of RAM and 32 GPU cores. So it's almost the fastest M1 Max available. I only came short on the RAM because I did not thought I would need 64 gigabytes, but this computer has it all, has the performance, has the design, has the ports, has the display. This was in that time, in my opinion, the best computer ever, the most complete computer laptop to say the least ever. I did a review, I enjoyed it and I gave it a 10 out of 10, like I praised this computer all over again and other YouTubers did also. And now, nine months later, I still do think this computer is an amazing buy. But now it has different challenges to overthrow because in 2022, after WWDC, we got two new computers and a new generation of Apple Silicon, the M2 chip. The M2 chip is not just an upgrade for, in terms of number of cores, it also upgrades the cores, which is very important just because the M1 Max was like a puzzle of M1s. So it had the same single core scores and it only improved on the multi-core. But now the M2 improved those scores. And so this M1 Max computer has worse single core performance than the M2. That's normal. This is an older generation. That's okay. Like this is normal. This is still a faster computer. Don't get me wrong. This still has the M1 Max with 32 GPU cores, like 10, six or eight high performance cores, two high efficiency cores. It's a beast. This is the beast of a computer. Like I did not come closer to killing this computer. Like I love this computer so, so much. This is heavy. That's why I'm moving around. And being heavy, let's talk about the design because this computer featured the first generation of this new MacBook design. This design is slim, but not as slim as the older design. It's more squared off and it's more symmetrical. This design, in my opinion, is more beautiful, but less practical to hold and to use. One thing though, it doesn't cut in on your hands because the sides have a fillet while the other computers had a chamfer. So this is a little bit so smoother and easier to hold, although it's a lot, a lot heavy and very, very bulky. But this is the M1 Max 16 inch computer. You also have the M1 Max 14 inch, which is smaller and less bulky and less heavy but it's also still thick. And when it compares it to the older generation 16 inch and even the older 13 inch design, these are bigger and bulkier, but a lot better. But this leaves with a very strange question. Now with the M2 computers with the same design as this MacBook Pro, especially the M2 MacBook Air, which features the same amazing design as this one, new colors, the same notched display. What can we do to battle these two computers? What are the differences? Should you spend the extra money buying the Pro version of the MacBook? Well, that's a very interesting question. And in terms of design, 
The only difference, in my opinion, is the amount of ports because this computer features these two ports right here. These ports here are SD card slots and HDMI, while the M2 MacBook Air doesn't have one. And of course, this computer features another Thunderbolt 4 port, while the M2 MacBook Air doesn't. And of course, these ports are Thunderbolt 4, while the MacBook Air only has Thunderbolt 3. But that's, that's it. In terms of design, that's the only differences. This computer is bigger, has a 16-inch display, while the M2 MacBook Air has a 14-inch, 13.9-inch display, and the M2 MacBook Pro, it's the still old design that we are used to. It's not okay. I don't like that design. You may like it, and if you do enjoy it, that's your only option. But between this and the M2 MacBook Air, the only differences are the amount of I.O. and maybe the bulkiness and head weight. So if you do really need a very light and very portable computer, this is not your option. And even the 14 inch, it's a little bit bulkier and heavier than I would like. So if you prioritize the lightness and portability, the M2 MacBook Air is the computer for you. And yes, that computer is very light, very beautiful to hold, and you have tons of new colors to explore. So in terms of design, I think that this computer is amazing. I love this design, but now you have an option for a similar design or a very much like design with a lot less weight and being a lot more portable. So if you don't really care about the big fans, the big performance, the portability on the M2 MacBook Air is its biggest factor. And this is a big display. Like this is a 16 inch display. Well, the M2 MacBook Air has a 13.6 inch display. So this is a bigger display, but also a lot heavier computer and a lot bulkier. So you have to decide. This is panel is 120 Hertz, which is promotion. So we can adapt between 10 and 120 Hertz, which is incredible. This panel is mini LED. This is, in my opinion, the best MacBook panel around and the best laptop screen around. While the M2 MacBook Air features a 13.6 liquid retina display. So an LCD. It's a little bit brighter than the older generation being 500 nits, but this computer can sustain a thousand nits of brightness and it's also HDR supported while the MacBook Air isn't. Also, the biggest difference you will notice is the promotion. Like I was telling you, promotion is by far one of my favorite features of this computer. I cannot live without it right now. I love it so, so much. Even when watching movies that are 30 frames per second, this computer ramps down and it shows you the movie at 30 frames or even at 24 if you really like to. So yes, this screen is the best part of this display. Like this computer is so amazing and having this incredible display on it just makes it more, even more perfect. It's very expensive though. So this computer here, the 16 inch starts at 24.99 and goes up to almost $4,000. So it's very expensive. If you spend the base model of the 16 inch computer on the MacBook Air, you will get the most powerful MacBook Air. So you can see the differences between the price of these two computers. The display on the MacBook Air is not bad though. It's not the best when compared to this one. So in terms of display, if you do really need the best display out there, then I do recommend the 16 inch over the 14 inch and the M2 MacBook Air, just because the 16 inch MacBook Pro from 2021 has the best display on a laptop ever. And it's even bigger than the 14 inch, which has the same display, but it's a little bit smaller. So in terms of display, I do think this is still the champion of computers and it's still well worth to buy because there's no competition to match it in 2022. Of course, the IO on these computers are very important. Nowadays, Apple is returning to the old good days of having IO on your computers and the M2 MacBook Air is no different. This computer has the MagSafe port, which is actually a very useful port because it frees you USB-Cs. Like the MagSafe port, you can see here, it has pins that can save your computer when you trip on your cord, but also has this amazing Thunderbolt 4 ports, an headphone jack, which is very good. And it also has an SD card slot and an HDMI and another Thunderbolt 4 port. So in total, it has one HDMI, one SD card slot, three Thunderbolt 4 ports, one MagSafe and one headphone jack. While the M2 MacBook Air also now features the MagSafe ports and features two Thunderbolt 3 ports, I think, and one headphone jack. So the I.O. on this computer is still a lot superior. But like, if you do like I.O., but you don't want a bulky computer, you have the middle ground, the 14 inch, and I do think that that's an amazing design. And for $2,000, that's the base model. I do think it's an amazing option. And talking about the base model computers, I do think that still the M1 MacBook Air it's a viable option for you if you don't want to spend more than $1,000 on a computer. So search for a refurbished MacBook Air with the M1 chip or even go for Apple and you can still buy it for 999 
Although I do still think for a two-year-old computer, that's a little bit too much. But the design is amazing. The M2 chip performance is still incredible. Still has the same single core performance as this computer. And of course, still goes very fast. But performance, it's a very interesting metric because the MacBook Pro is known for its amazing performance. And now with the M1 Max chip, it's just incredible. Like I have no trouble with this computer. This is more, way more than I need. Like I've done 3D rendering, I've done Blender, I've done SolidWorks, I've done AutoCAD, I've done a ton of stuff and even SolidWorks, it's on a virtual machine. So it has to run Windows, a virtual machine and a layer of production for x86 apps. So like on a three layer production virtual machine, this computer is able to run it 60 frames per second, no problem. So this is an amazing computer and very, very fast performance here is no issue like this is the best performing computer i've ever owned and probably you too so like this is an amazing performer but the m2 mapu care now has the m2 chip and the m2 chip now is like the new best thing it's not as good as this one of course but it has some new features that make it almost as good as this computer for some tasks if you are a video editor probably i would recommend you going still for this computer but now, the M2 chip also features video encoders for H.265 H and ProRes. So, like, the M1 didn't, and that was one of the flaws for editing videos that made it slower when compared to this computer. But now that you have video encoders on the M2, like, 90% of video editors will be served. Well, you can probably edit 4K footage pretty well. And this computer, let me tell you, this is, for video editing, the best machine I've ever bought. So, if you do really need the top end of performance, the MacBook Pro is for you. But if you don't really need that top end performance and you are good with a very fast computer that can do 95% of things that pros need to do, then the M2 MacBook Air is for you. And if you don't like that design, you don't really like this design, but you do want the performance of the M2 chip, then you have the M2 MacBook Pro, which I do think it's very outdated nowadays. I do think that display is not as good. It has bigger bezels. It has worse IO. And the only advantage that it has is a fan with the M2 chip. That from the story from Apple using fans on Apple Silicon, the difference between the M1 with the fan and the M1 without a fan was like 5%. So I expect that to be the difference between the M2 and the M2 with a fan. So I do not recommend you going for the M2 MacBook Pro. Either way, if you do really need the extra performance, take a jump and go for the M1 Max or even the M1 Pro MacBook Pros. But if you don't really need it, just settle with the M2 MacBook Air. Amazing design, amazing computer, amazing display, amazing performance. So the last thing that I wanna compare between these two and tell you why I do still think this computer is still worth it, it's because this computer, like I was telling you, is an amazing performer. And the M2 will also be, but this computer has something that other MacBook Pros or even other Windows PCs that have like a performance close to this don't have is battery life. This computer lasts me while editing a video, six hours. Like very intensive stocks last this computer hours, while Windows PCs or older Intel MacBooks, they last you like half an hour, one hour tops. So this computer is a battery champ. Of course, the M2 MacBook Air will also be a battery champ. I have no doubts about that. The same battery as the M1. So the battery life, you will be well served. And okay, you got to the big question, like which computer should you buy? The M2 MacBook Air? or the M1 Max MacBook Pro? Well, it depends. Are you a very performance needed person and focus, then you should go for this computer. Spend the extra money and you will notice a difference in performance and IO and display. But if you don't really need it, then go for the M2. It's a newer generation, so the single core performance will be better and it will probably feel faster in some quick tasks like opening the web and doing some file transfer or something like that, it will be feeling faster than this computer because it has a better single core performance. While this MacBook Pro will feel faster doing very intensive tasks, things like Blender, Final Cut Pro, Xcode, exporting video, like converting video, this will be way faster than the M2 MacBook Air still. So if you are a performance focused person, the M1 Max is still the computer for you after WWDC. But if you don't really need that much performance, the M2 MacBook Air is the option for you. You will save tons of money and you will get an amazing, amazing computer that performs so well that you won't notice the difference between this computer and the M2 and the design is a lot slimmer and portable. And in my opinion, 
more beautiful with the new Midnight Blue. So that's it. The M1 Max is still worth it? Yes, but it depends. Do you really need the performance? Buy it. If you don't really need the performance, go for the M2 MacBook Air. And if you want to spend the least amount of money, go for the M1 MacBook Air. But this is a very complete Apple Silicon lineup and I think it has a computer for everyone. So if you are decided to buy the M1 Max, don't be afraid, go for it and you will find that it is an amazing, amazing, amazing computer. The display, incredible, the best in the business, the I.O., incredible, not the best in the business, but very good for Apple and the design. In my opinion, the best design that Apple has ever put on the MacBook Pro. And so I have to label this computer as the best MacBook Pro ever, in my opinion. The 16 inch with the M1 Max. And of course, it has 32 gigabytes of RAM and 32 GPU cores. But what are your thoughts on this computer? Should you buy it still, in your opinion? Would you buy it? And of course, do you have one? Share your experience down below on the comments down below. And are you excited for the M2 MacBook Air to come? I will buy one, I will review it, and I will compare it directly to this M1 Max MacBook Pro. So don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss those videos. This has been Tech Summer talking to you here. Bye.